Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you as always for your tweets. Stevie, how are you, Stevie? Are you well? Oh, marvellous. Thank you, Dan. Oh, lovely. That's good to hear. I think I should be asking you how you are. I'm good. Not. I'm good. I'm good. Gab Marcotti is with us here as well. Uh, let's get straight to it. Stevie, how do you rate Nuno Espirito Santo? Oh, I have to say, I've, I've <laughs> he's gone down a little in my estimation. I, I actually thought that he may be a good fit for Tottenham. Right. Because I like the way that, that, that Wolves played. Yep. Yes, they had the last six months of his term there, they struggled, but then they lost the, the goal scorer, and that's huge when you just can't go out and get somebody else. So I thought it might be okay. Unfortunately, the way the season started, it's not looking great. No. They don't, it's one thing to lose, but it's another thing to lose and look a complete shambles. Yep. And that's pretty much what they look like right now. Gab, is sticking with youth the key to Arsenal's current upward trend, or has Arteta changed something else? You know what? It was the key a year ago. And then what do they do? They extended Aubameyang. They didn't oh. uh, sell Lacazette. They signed Willian. Uh, but I guess, I guess better late than never. They're around to it. I think it's definitely... Obviously, you need to have the right type of, of younger player. Um, but, you know, when, when you look at the guys they, they brought in, from Tomiyasu to White to the guys they promoted internally, I um, was really glad to see Smith Rowe uh, starting with Udegaard in this game, Saka and so on. Yeah, I think it's it's the right way forward because it, it's it's cheaper, it buys you time. It, I think some of those players are, are more coachable than some of the veterans who, you know, maybe don't quite realize what Arsenal back into the top four rather than a team that, you know, always wins. Oh. All these things together, I think it's exciting. And, and I think this win was really big for them because it's one thing to go and, you know, and beat Burnley and, and Norwich 1-0 after the start they had. It's quite another to go and do it in a derby. Who does Jules love more? Gab, PSG or Arsenal? Oh, it's PSG. Is it yeah. PSG? Oh. Go on. Come oh, on. come. I, I, you really need me to answer that? Come on, man. No. How often have you seen him wear, like, the, the, the thing with, like, the old school Gunners logo with a stupid gun, as opposed to the old <laughs> Paris Saint-Germain tat he sports on the show, or stuff that's related to Paris and the City of Light and the Eiffel Tower? Yeah, that's and, true. And, come on, man. That's very, that's that? very true. Uh, Stevie, Brentford were highly affected at chipping over Trent and flooding the box for the second ball. What is Liverpool's solution to this obvious vulnerability? Well, I think that the two centre-backs have to do better, Matip right. and Van Dijk. What was wrong with Van Dijk yesterday? I, I, I think he was caught off guard. I don't, I don't think he was expecting such a physical battle. Right. Uh, Ivan, Ivan Tony and Bomo were just at them the whole game. And the fact that Liverpool play with, with their full-backs pushing on, those holes have always been there. Right. But they've, but they've never played against two forwards. So basically it was 2v2. You know, generally, generally teams will have three up front, but there's basically one because the other two are chasing the fullbacks. They they couldn't cope with it. I think it caught them by surprise. Uh, speaking of defence, Gab, what exactly is wrong with Juventus' back line? They keep conceding goals despite after they brought back Allegri. So I don't know if you remember this, but but um, before the Euros, I was concerned about. The insistence on Bonucci and Chiellini, and obviously, yes. yeah, you both said that Turkey had a better really back line well than Italy. Euros and yes, and it turned out uh, it turned out working very, very well. Um, but the fact is, over a whole season, I think it can be a little bit of a different story. And uh, obviously, Bonucci and Delic played today. They still conceded. Delic's taken, I think, a lot of criticism. Um, but for example, today, I thought the defensive issues, several of them were on Bonucci. Certainly, you know, you get beaten by by Maya Yoshida in the air. And mm. let me repeat that. Maya Yoshida, not Cristiano <laughs> Ronaldo, not Romelu Lukaku, Maya Yoshida. Um, so I think all the problems they had in midfield kind of masked over the fact that defensively, uh, I don't know if you really have a super solid base to start from because you can't expect Bonucci and Chiellini to play every single game uh, at a high level. And when you mix in the lick, then you, you, you're kind of redoing your partnership. So I think that's a big part of it. But more broadly, I didn't like the way Juventus 
you know, they take the lead and then they say, all right, guys, let's shut up shop at the back, defend the league and, and lead, and maybe we'll get something on the break. You know, that worked in the past. That was the old school Juventus when they had different players, when football was played a little bit differently. In this case, you're inviting the opposition forward. And so even a team like the Versa Sampdoria, which is a purely defending counter side, hey, when you're giving them the ball and they're camped out in your half, things can go wrong. Final question, Gab, after six games, how would you evaluate Mourinho's job at Roma so far? I'm pretty positive about the job he's done. Look, um, you know, obviously he's extremely grumpy right now if he's watching <laughs> after losing the derby and he's blamed the referee and found all sorts of reasons why they didn't get the three points. But I think the reality is they did spend some money in the summer. He got the players he wanted. He got the fans galvanized. It's been a good start to the season, a good start in Europe. They're in the top four. These things are going to take time. What nobody wants to see is, and I know there's cynical fans at Spurs and United are saying, oh, well, we've seen this before. We all love them at the start. And then, you know, the screws come loose. Um, that can't happen this time. Mourinho cannot allow that to happen. And, and I don't think so far he's been on his best behavior. I think he's learned from his mistakes. I'm not going to go and vouch that everything's going to go fine, but I think he's definitely on the right track thus far with the caveat that, you know, we kind of said the same after he took over at Spurs and, and at Old Trafford. Uh, that's it. We're done. Thank you very much, as always, for your tweets. We'll be heading home now and watching a great comeback from Europe. I oh, yes. Oh, yeah, right. but... What could possibly oh. go wrong? Uh, be sure to join us tomorrow Head as we'll be looking mental. ahead uh, to round two of the Champions League. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.